I'd like to just open up in prayer because obviously we need his strength to uh, to do what he's called us to do in everything that we do. So yeah. I just ask his presence. I know his presence has been here. Hasn't it been wonderful, you guys? Mm -hmm. Don't you just feel his presence here all the time? <laughs> Thank you, Charlie, for that. And, you know, just the, the whole body here is just gifted. And we all fit, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> hands and feet and mouths and you know eyes and ears, ears. <laughs> thank you lord mm -hmm. for creating a body that we can be blessed mm -hmm. by and bless so it's mm -hmm. like we got to work together on this you know mm -hmm. so that's that's <laughs> I, I pray over this and i i thank you father for giving me uh, these words to say mm -hmm. and i want it to bring you glory only glory glory to you father yahweh mm -hmm. so um the uh month of sheshvan um, very interesting. It's about uh, um, it's about walls falling on you, <laughs> and then you know, and then the wall falls on you, and then you pick it up, and you say, "No, this is that's not. I'm not even going to look at that like the scratch. I'm not going to look at the wall falling on me. I'm looking at how I can put it back up." So that's what Shashvan's that's what Shashvan's all about. Explain that. Well, well, you should probably explain a little and bit. And the of people that, that were here, the listen, were they here. know they. <laughs> They know this because I walked in here and actually was, I got an, a Nehemiah anointing. You know, yeah, it's you like, did. Oh, well, all okay, of a sudden, Nehemiah, I'm, I'm, I'm you want me to wall. build a wall. I'm actually, Jack wall. commissioned me last night <laughs> to build a wall. So I was prepared. I came in and, uh, you know, I was looking at it. Actually, it collapsed on Bob the other day. And it's like, he was said, man, it just made We're this big crash. We're talking about the wall you know? over here. <laughs> and he says, and then half of it was hanging off of there. And I didn't hear about that till I walked by it. <laughs> and then I walked by this wall, and it all came down. And these guys are trying to do music up here, you know. It's just great, you know. And all crashed, boom, bang. And I'm standing over there going, whoa. So I looked over the wall, and, man, I saw this little thing scoot by, you know. It's like, you know, it could. I think it was the enemy, you know. Yeah. I mean, he was standing back there. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a mouse. No, I'm, I'm telling you, it wasn't a mouse. But, but I, you know, just a streak, and it was like, I'm sure the enemy just pushed that wall on me today. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. He just wanted to. So then, no. so then I get a hold of Bill, and you know, then we're, you know, we're still. You got to see this whole picture. Bill the servant, <laughs> you know, Bill the servant guy, and I bring Bill, this. Bill. I bring this liquid nails, and I, you know, Bill's cranking on it. It's not coming out. I go, huh, Bill? You know, I grabbed it. Quah, quah, boop! It pops out the side of the top. You know, it's like <laughs> it's old glue. I came prepared for anything. I had gloves on, you know. I, had, I had, like I don't know what the enemy might do. I'm gonna have gloves. I'm ready. Bill didn't put the gloves on. He's down there wiping this glue on with his finger now. Come on, man. <laughs> what a servant of God. That's Amen. you know the anointing of ne Nehemiah be on Bill's hands because he, he got that liquid nails all over him, you know. <laughs> so anyway, that. So the wall just, is fixed. Yeah, Yay. the wall's fixed. That's Yay. that's just. <laughs> or at least most, I mean, the part that was falling down. <laughs> yeah. So, uh. and it's a new beginning. You know, mm -hmm. Sheshbon is the eighth month, which means new beginning. So, Amen. you know, there we go. We, we're starting a new beginning of not having that wall fall on us one thing, you know. But, um, yes. but, if, but we've just left the most exciting month, you guys. Yom Teruah. Mm -hmm. Whoo! Yeshua's coming, man. Mm -hmm. Yom Teruah. The, the ten days of awe. Father, examine my heart. Show me, show me, Father. Mm -hmm. Let me return to you in repentance. Yep. You know, so you got those 10 days. And then we went into Sukkot. Mm -hmm. What a great Sukkot, man. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it's great. That's just great. So yeah. we, we had a wonderful month behind us. It was just, it, you know, we, it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, where am I at? I'm just, I, <laughs> the, the, you know, Yom Kippur, where yeah, yeah the Day of Atonement. <laughs> Then the great celebration is the code, the Feast of Tabernacles, the dress rehearsal whew, for the yes. wedding supper of the Lamb. Yes. Ooh, that was last month. Mm -hmm. What a great month. Yes. So, so as we begin, you know, th the month, this month, the new beginning, uh, let us continue in, in the new fervor that we mm -hmm. gained, knowing what that month was all about. Yes. You know, let us, let us uh, take all that we have gained and integrated those truths yes. with purpose into this new beginning of Amen. ours. You know, it's just a fascinating month. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it, we started at last, and now 
there are no festivals in this month. Mm -hmm. There's no feast in this month. And there's no fast in this month. Kind so of a strange thing. Yeah. I mean, only month mm -hmm. of the 12 that the Father said, uh, just take a break. I think it was from taking a break from last month. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you live outside for eight days or seven days, whatever, you know, <laughs> you, you're going to need a break. You, you know, need so a the breath. Lord, you know, so, but it's also yeah. not only that, but it is also, um, it's, a, it's a time to take this, this huge breath because Hanukkah is coming. So we get a time frame between this feast and this this wonderful month. Man, I love the fee, the fall feast. They are just so special to me. Mm -hmm. And then we get this break. Oh boy. Um, but the but the amazing thing that the Father showed me about this break that we have, it's right after the wedding supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of like we're stepping into the millennial reign. Mm -hmm. That's a, that was just fascinating when the Father showed me that. So, and it is called Messiah's Month, mm -hmm. where the Jewish culture feel like he will come back and rededicate the third temple. So that's what's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yes, thousand year reign, even, you know, but it is the second of the, the new yearly cycle. This is the. So it's the eighth month. Yes, the eighth of counting, month of counting months. But it's the second Nisan, month. But it's the second the month of the year. Yes. So um, in this new yearly cycle that we're in, the second month in the yearly cycle, this is sometimes called the Mashavan, Marshavan, Marhashavan, Marhashavan, or bitter. Mm -hmm. How appropriate that this month represents bitter and blessed. Where did we just come from? I mean, wouldn't you be bitter? If even one of your children didn't make it somewhat, I mean, please, mm -hmm. I would not feel blessed if any of my children weren't written in that book last month mm -hmm. and celebrating with me in the wedding supper of the Lamb. Oh, yeah. bitter and blessed. Mm -hmm. Let's all go out blessed. Yeah. I mean, um, Oh. Thank you, Father. Our, you know, see, w we can we can look at those the the bitterness by the loss, and that they didn't make it, and that's what this month's all about. It's you know I could get bitter. Hey, the wall fell on me. You know, come on, man. You know <laughs> I'm trying to get ready to to teach today, and the wall falls. You know. I could get you know. I mean that's just a simple example. You know, but no, see. We can't allow that bitterness, mm -mm. but we have to see the blessings in it, in everything. And that's what this month is like. Mm -hmm. Let's look back at that blessing that we gained. Yeah. So, so a new beginning in a new world. Just think about this one, being overwhelmingly blessed by Yeshua and being accepted as his kingdom people and that our names are written down in that book mm -hmm. and we gain citizenship with the Most High. Amen. A new beginning in a world, in a new world, mm -hmm. and a new temple, yep. and a new remnant <laughs> with our Messiah's reigning king over all. What an exciting month we're in right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yahweh gave us an example of this in Noah. Mm -hmm. Historically, Noah's flood began in the month of Cheshbon. Mm -hmm. And the earth was dried up after the flood in the month of Cheshbon in the following year. We read this in Genesis 7, 11, that in the second month, on the 17th of the month, the foundations of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was on the earth for 40 days. But wait, you, you say there aren't, but that we aren't in the eighth month. Yeah, it actually says in the word, we are in the second month. So I thought, oh, that's great. I thought it was the eighth month. So that's why... We are counting. That's why we are learning about the counting of the months. It's so that when we go to the word and it says in the second month, well, wait, I thought it was in the eighth month. <laughs> so I'm confused. <laughs> so I was looking for the eighth month in the word, and it said second month. And then I thought, oh, yeah, I'm in the new year of 5781, like we talked last month. So 
we reset our mind and realize this is what we're this is what we're learning and we're like little kindergartners like Rick and I say all the time we're learning this calendar and we're learning God's timekeeping so that was that was revelation to me i've uh, in fact this week this weekend is the beginning of genesis it is the first torah portion is about noah it ends the ending of the Torah portion is Noah, um, you know, getting, re- I mean, he hears about um, that he gets called to, to build an ark. So amazing <laughs> that it falls on the first day of Sheshvan. I thought that was amazing. Um, it's actually tonight into tomorrow, so. Bitterness to blessings. Amen. Mm-hmm. Also, very interesting that the tribe of Manasseh that Rick's going to talk about, um, which shows on our poster right here, is represented by an olive branch. I, I thought, that's, that's an incredible, like, is that a coincidence? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Nothing is a coincidence, right? So it is significant for Manasseh. He is the olive branch. But remember that when they landed with the ark, Noah sent out a dove, and what did he bring back? An olive branch. So how cool is that, that even that is a, yeah, (laughs) thank you, Charlie. No coincidences in the word of God, not in Hebrew. Thank you, Father. So the Hebrew letter this month is noon. And interesting, as Rick said, it is the month for the Messiah. Noon represents Messiah. It also means to sprout a seed, new life. He embodies our new beginning. He was the incorruptible seed. Hallelujah. So interestingly, Sheshvan is another name of a month that comes from Babylon. They named the month while they were in captivity for 70 years in Babylon. And I find that interesting that we have several names of calendar months that are from Babylon. But the original Hebrew name for the month was Bul, B-U-L, which denotes the idea of drying up. And what do we see all over? Leaves are drying up. Leaves begin to get decay with the approach of autumn. And so it's truly a month of darkness and decay, and darkness remains, but what is happening below the surface? Growth of a seed is, be- is, is being put down below, and then we'll have the rains and the snow and the months of winter, and then what comes in the spring? The spiritual seeds that were planted this last month. Think about in Tishrei. Think about what was happening in America with the return, with all of these people that are coming into the harvest. Sean Foyt and his Let Us Worship. (laughs) I can't get over those videos. Every time I look at them on on YouTube, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many people in the harvest. And you think of the seeds of that harvest that are being planted right now. And then now they are going to um, be watered. They're going to grow. Hopefully we can disciple, like Jack said. We can disciple these people, bring in the harvest all over our country. We pray for our election. (laughs) Um, And the harvest is going to produce great fruit in the months to come. Hallelujah. So grateful for that. Do you have your oil? Oh, yay. So amazing. The scent sense of this month is smell. Um, You know, each month we either have an action that we are doing or we have a sense. And this month it is the sense of smell. Sheshvan is connected with the fragrance of myrrh. I thought that was really interesting. Um, It was the ingredient used in the anointing oil used to anoint the tabernacle, the priests, and the kings. And, of course, we all know about the wise men and the, the, you know, the star watchers that came to the young child, Yeshua, and they found him and presented him with gifts. 
They presented him with gold, which meant his kingship, frankincense, which meant for worship, and then myrrh, which is mourning and death. And myrrh was what they anointed his body with. So this month is a time to allow the fragrance of Yahavah to begin to permeate our soul. Many of us use healing oils, right? They stir within us a revival inside our inner beings. Those of us that, oh, when Rick puts breathe in front of my face, it's like the, just those oils, peppermint, um, eucalyptus, those, they just revive, like it's like a revival within you. It's that smell. So especially at this time, we need to bask in the fragrance of the kingdom. What does that smell like? to us. It's an aroma of his oil pouring over our lives, reviving us for this kingdom work that we're to do right now, that we're to do in the next few months. That's what it's for. Of course, we know to get oil, it takes pressing, doesn't it? That's not a fun process to go through. But we must, in order to have the anointing flow out of us to others during this great harvest that we know is coming, right? These seeds and these people, we know it's coming. We need to be able to pour our oil onto them and pour it out. And the smell, I just, I can't imagine what the kingdom of heaven smells like. Can you? I mean, just all of the oils that we know of that come from plants. I know, Dawn, you just, you know, you're always talking about all the oils that are just, they revive us when we smell them. So what, <laughs> no coincidence again. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Hallelujah. So in the heavens, we're back in the heavens. <laughs> the gospel and the stars. Uh, the constellation is Scorpio. Hebrew, Akrab, hopefully I did that justice. I think so. Scorpion, <laughs> or it also means conflict or war. Mm. So, you know, let's just hope that that's not prophetic speaking out of my mouth in this month that's coming. <laughs> I just pray against that right now. <laughs> that. <laughs> that is, yeah. uh, how yeah. what, what conflict yeah. is coming? War, conflict, and war. <laughs> I think it's here, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's already been the here. The conflict is here, <laughs> amen, and has been. Mm -hmm. So another name is Acidus, meaning attack of the enemy. Ooh, wow! Conflict and war and attack. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> this month. That's what this month's. Yeah, I so don't think that's a coincidence. This either. is what it shows in the stars. Mm -hmm. So, the uh, the brightest star is in the heart of Scorpio, and it's called Antares. Antares, mm -hmm. meaning wounding. In Hebrew, lasath, meaning perverse. Mm. So the stars in the tail, the stinger, mm -hmm. are also known as perverse. Uh, perverse in Webster's Dictionary is to turn away from what is right and good. Conflict, corrupt. Ooh, that's not a coincidence. Corrupt. <laughs> So the enemy has always been in a position of cor corruption, always. Mm -hmm. So, and, and trying to turn Yahweh's creation from what is right to and good. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's been his purpose all along. Mm -hmm. So be careful not to get stung by that venom or, uh, should I say, uh, vaccination? <laughs> by the venomous sting who... <laughs> If you know what I mean. <laughs> the venomous thing, if you know what I mean. We can just use that as a code word. <laughs> uh. <laughs> the, the three supporting constellations, are they all point to this eternal conflict with the enemy. Wrestling with the serpent, being stung by the scorpion, and ultimately having victory over the enemy mm -hmm. from the strong man. This is in itself, this right here could take hours. We could sit down. And just get into that like, whoa, really? That is so good. I, I'm just skirting it, guys. You know, this is amazing. 
just to let well, you know. Well, when he sits down to look at it, and of course, we didn't have a lot of time this week, um, and he sits down and starts talking about it, and I'm like, this is incredible. Like, you could spend yeah. a half an hour talking about the stars in the heavens and how they proclaim his gospel. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm amazed yeah. at. Yeah. It fits uh, into this month and perfectly. And it fits into this month perfectly. Just perfectly. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I, I do find it fascinating that it is a conflict of what? The bitter and the blessed again in the heavens mm -hmm. to proclaim this month. You know, the enemy is bitter because he could not defeat our Messiah and complete his desire of dominion over good and evil. Amen. That's Woo. what it shows in the stars in the heavens at this Hallelujah. time of month. Mm -hmm. He robbed Adam of his crown by corrupting him. Uh, he, he, you know, it's part of it. And showing him good and evil. Think about that one. But he was defeated by the second Adam, Yeshua, mm -hmm. who for our sakes was not corrupted and is our perfect example of conquering over evil. That's this month. That's this month. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> No coincidence. Yeah, no. <laughs> and how d we always approach this when we start to look about uh, about it, we're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> how it fits right now. That's always what is so amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Amazing. Well, you s well, uh, yeah, I'll teach. I'll talk about that later. But <laughs> and, you know, it's a tribe of Manasseh. Salute. Guys. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Salute. Salute. To Manasseh. Tribe of Manasseh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Manasseh was the firstborn of, of Joseph's, born in Egypt. His name means one who forgets. Genesis 41, 51. What, what is he forgetting? Mm -hmm. What's he forgetting? Bitterness. Mm -hmm. Whew, so he can be blessed. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. So he names his first son that, and every time he sees him, he thinks about, oh, hey, now. Nah, you know, forget it. Forget it. That's what he named his son. Forget it. <laughs> forget it. <laughs> so every time Manasseh, Manasseh, come here. Okay. Yeah, Lord, I know. Forget it. Forget <laughs> it. Right? Uh, yes. So, <laughs> well, and he needed to forget those things. Joseph did so he could be blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, it, all the horrible things his brothers did. He gets, you know, he, he gets falsely accused by Potiphar, and he ends up in the prison. And it's like, my gosh, if anybody had reason to be bitter it was Joseph yes but he didn't mm -hmm. so and he was blessed mm -hmm. that's what Sheshvan Heshvan Sheshvan is all about yeah you know and he eventually because of that blessing and he did not become bitter by the things yes. he was to a able to save a people yeah amazing mm -hmm. mm. a Manasseh his son he could have been bitter Look at that, man. He he didn't get the blessings from the grandfather yeah. to be above his brother. So his younger brother got the blessings. Even being the oldest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but Manasseh turned it. Mm -hmm. And he did great things. Yes. You know, because you know what he thought? Hey, none of the other grandsons from Reuben or Simeon or any of those guys even get to be considered a tribe member. Come on. Mm -hmm. He knew he had a special place. Well, a tribe leader. Because a tribe yes. leader, he yes. was put in a position. And he's like, you know, he, it wasn't second best, guys. It was not second best. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was a position yes. of, of honor and authority mm -hmm. in that tribe of Manasseh. So yes. None of the other grandsons got to have that. No, nope. no. Nope. And he was, in the, he was in the West Camp under the leadership of Ephraim. His older, I mean, his, his younger brother is placed in a leadership mm -hmm. and thrived in the wilderness. Manasseh yeah. thrived in the wilderness greatly and increased from 32,300 men to 52,700 men of fighting age in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were thriving. Man. Yes. <laughs> but it was because he chose yes. not to be bitter. Bitter to blessings. Mm -hmm. Bitter mm -hmm. to blessings. You can yeah. see it, man. It's yeah. amazing. And Ephraim's tribe decreased in the wilderness. They were given the largest portion of land. Manasseh um, was. Manasseh was. Mm -hmm. uh, and on, on both here. the west side and the east side. And, you know, I talked about the half-tribe of Manasseh. They split them up. 
you know, and they were with Gad and Reuben, and they built the altar and stuff, but half the tribe went over there because they were cattlemen, you know. I think the other half went over into the promised land because they were farmers, you know, and they, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. You can see how big of the land mass that Manasseh had. Yeah. It was huge, almost, you know, second to Judah, I would say, or almost equal to Judah. So that was an incredible blessing, and I think that came out of him not choosing to be bitter yes. for what um, his he was blessed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they guarded the western gate, mm -hmm. their power, you know. So um, oh, this is, yeah, this is amazing. Genesis 48, 20. You know, Jacob blessed them, and he says, you know, may, may Yahweh make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. And, and we do that. You know, we do that at our Sabbath meeting. May Yahweh be make you. May the Lord bless you, make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. Mm -hmm. You know, over and our it, sons oh and grandsons. Man. Over yeah. our sons and grandsons. And why do we do that? Mm -hmm. You know, and I I find it that uh, because you know they weren't direct sons of Jacob, mm -hmm. and we speak that blessing over them, so they can be called into the inheritance yeah. and take their rightful place as leaders of the tribe mm -hmm. that they're called to be. We speak that over our grandsons. Well, and in a sense, they were grafted in. So here there are two tribe leaders, and they're grafted in. Yes. They're not, you know. The as sons. As sons. They uh, were grandsons, but they're, sons. They're, gra they're grafted in they're as grafted sons. grafted in. What a picture. And so when know? we pray that over our own sons and yes. grandsons, you know, Ephraim it's, and it's Manasseh. powerful. Yeah. Even the pagan society of Egypt, they held the foundation that Joseph taught them. That's amazing. You think about Ephraim. That's powerful to me. I'm speaking that over my grandsons. In this pagan society that we're in right yes. now, man, I pray that you're like Ephraim and Manasseh, and you don't let Egypt spoil you, mm -hmm. that you stand firm on what your father's teaching you and what yes. the foundations and where you're going and where you're walking, and don't let that pagan world Amen. speak into your life Amen. because you were called out as sons and daughters of the Most High. Amen. Kingdom. Amen. So that's why we say Ephraim mm -hmm. and Manasseh. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. That's why we love Sabbath. <laughs> yes, we? we do. We do. Yeah. Uh, so the essence of Sheshvan is deterioration or bitterness to sweet. The message of Sheshvan is that we have a choice in this time to either be bitter or choose to bring the sweetness of Yahovah to cover the bitterness and make it a sweet aroma to him. Okay, bitterness can do what? Only cause destruction in your life. Amen. Sweetness of God brings an aroma to him. But how many of us, <laughs> that's so hard. That is so hard. We have to choose. To not be bitter. Yeah. It's a choice. It's a choice. Testimony of <laughs> connecting to Yahweh's cycle of life. Mm -hmm. all, his, all of his creation is on a cycle, usually orchestrated in a 12 unit process or cycle. Months. 12 units. Yep. And as, as I come full cycle, I've come full cycle since my injury. And I've, I've you know, in this month. Mm -hmm. So the month of my accident, I can't help but look out back at each point on that unit of time that the Father has shown me along this way and had me walking in that time and telling yep. about his months and living it mm -hmm. as a testimony for the last year. And then it, it's so easy to get up here and talk about it because I'm living it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it happened at my accident. During Sheshvan. So, um, it's, it's so incredible to be on that calendar. Yes. And, and knowing that in walking in that, that the father showed me a year ago about bitterness to blessed. Mm -hmm. 
And those 12 units on that graduations have been blessed, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Truly blessed. Because I didn't allow that bitterness. Mm -hmm. And I was blessed. I remember it distinctly when he, I came home from work and he had heard someone speak about Sheshvan and being bitter to sweet. And I could have been bitter. I was struggling with the bitterness of the woman that hit him with her truck. And I was challenged by his words. Honey, we need to give it the sweetness of God. We need to not be bitter towards her. God's going to bless it. We have to trust that. God's going to bless this. We don't know what. We don't know what's coming. So. We, we, he, <laughs> he showed me months and got me living in them mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And That's where we got, started. He got me on his calendar. Mm -hmm. And it's powerful because mm -hmm. I was living what was happening. Mm -hmm. So, she, she, and also, Shesh, Sheshvan. 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 You have to spit. A, it's a month reserved. <laughs> it's a month reserved for the anointing. <laughs> For the anointing. It's a month reserved for the anointing. Yes. Which Yahweh pulls you aside to draw a new anointing. He, he, he pulls you aside to draw a new anointing out of you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes from a truck. <laughs> uh. This can be an easy month or a hard month because he must press the anointing out of you. Cry out for the anointed to be pressed out of you. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't looking for it, but he did. Mm -hmm. And he pressed out of me that month. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the book, A Time to Advance, by Chuck Pierce and Robert Heidler, page 306. You don't that's think that quote. spoke to me? <laughs> Woo. Yes. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So... From that. <laughs> From that. Um, in this past year, in reflection, mm -hmm. in June we started uh, a witness altar. God called us to build a witness to him. Mm -hmm. And we built a witness altar. And I had some brothers that helped me with that. It was just incredible. Fascinating time. And, and we, we had a, a goal in mind that we were going to get it to a point for... Uh, Yom Teruah, so we could blow the trumpets down there. And there's especially for Sukkot. You know, we had to get that. Yeah. You know, and it was great. I mean, it was just fantastic, you know. So we built this witness altar. And God has used it in many ways, you guys. I mean, my gosh, the fellowship, the brotherhood, everything that's happened down there has just been anointed by the Lord. You know, broken, things broken and spoken, you know, curses over families and stuff burnt up in that place. Offerings given from people's hearts of time and money and sacrifice. Such an offering to the Father mm -hmm. as a witness. Aid mm -hmm. as a witness. Mm -hmm. Well, and I can't help but think that your injury and being bitter that wouldn't, that could have caused that to not be accomplished. Right. So mm -hmm. that blessing came out of there. That was a blessing. Woo! Yeah. Good blessing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not done. <laughs> You guys, <laughs> last Tuesday morning into Wednesday, um, I got up, you know, Wednesday early morning, I guess, wouldn't it be, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm, I'm dealing with some issues, you know. I've got a heavy heart about some things that I need to get taken care of for myself for work situation, you know, and, and so I had a heavy heart. Lord had me up. I'm writing stuff down. You know, Lord, what do I need to do? I just don't feel good about this situation. Lord, help me with this. Show me what I need to do. And so I travailed over it, you know, until about 4.30 in the morning. And then I fell asleep on my chair. And uh, and then Christy was up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And, and uh, so I heard her rustling, you know. And so, you know, I had just kind of tried to doze off. And I just got up and I says, hey, Christy, I'm really perplexed about this situation. Uh, I here I'll explain it to you. So I did, and and then she, she understood it, and she goes, you know what, Rick, I'll, you know, I'll I'll be there with you for that. Oh, it, it lifted this burden off of me, man. It was like, thank you, Lord. 
-hmm. And, you know, so I was able to step back in my chair. And I dozed off. And this was about 5.45 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so I doze off in my chair. And I'm, and I'm just in this, you know, I don't think you dream because I thought you had to go into RAM sleep to dream. So if you're, if you're going in and you're just kind of, you just went out and all of a sudden you're seeing things and you remember those things, I think that's a vision. So, I, you know, correct me if you're, I'm wrong, you know, but I, I don't know. But that's the way I kind of looked at it. So I fell asleep and, uh, and, and I have this vision. And my dad's, <laughs> in my little Toyota pickup that he gave me, 1988 Toyota pickup, you guys know, SR5, you can't kill him. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Dad. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he hangs his head out of the window. And he looks well, at me. Where was he? He was sitting in the pickup, the driver's side. Down at the fire altar, at the witness parked altar. up on the hill at the witness altar. Mm -hmm. And I lo looked over at him, and he looks at me, and he goes, we didn't have enough time. We had, you know, he wanted to get something taken care of. We didn't have enough time to do it. And I consoled him in this vision. Dad, Dad, mm -hmm. we had time, Dad. Mm -hmm. We hunted. We built things, you know. Remember baseball? Dad, we had the time I was consoling my dad. And then I woke up, and I got off the couch, and I said, Christy, I don't know. I says, I just feel like I need to share this with you because I don't know what's going on. And so I shared it with her, mm -hmm. that exact thing. And, and not less than a half an hour, the, the Lord, uh, my brother called, and my dad had died. And so he came. He came to me to be forgiven mm -hmm. at the witness altar, and the Spirit comforted me because I know where he's at. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. And the story goes: the night before, he went to my mom. And well, and you have to say that. Mom yeah. has been witnessing to him for months, years. She, every day she reads her Bible, so she's been reading out loud to him. And during COVID, they didn't go anywhere. So she's been witnessing to him. She's been turning on the television on Sunday mornings, and they listen to the preachers on Sunday morning. But so, he so would never tell any yeah, of us. Nobody. He would my never daughter, tell any of us. My daughter does raise. She's a powerhouse, man. Couldn't, she went right to him. Grandpa, you know the Lord? We, we need you to know the Lord. We need to know that you know yeah. the Lord. You, she's, she yeah, was adamant. She could be that with him. And he would Not put her off. Not many people could. He would put her yeah, off. Yeah, Stubborn John yeah. Chadwick. Yeah. <laughs> Stubborn John Chadwick. And so um, <laughs> Tuesday evening, mm -hmm. before they went to bed, uh, he told my mom, he said, how do I make things right? How do I get forgiveness of these things? What do I do? And she goes, all you have to do is ask forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Jesus covers it. <laughs> and he came to me. At 545, he came to you. Well, in that time frame. Yeah. And he said, I forgive you. And then, I think that was about 6.30, my, my mom told us yesterday that about that time when I was telling Christy that he was forgiven, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at, the, at the witness altar, um, that he said to her, honey, I believe everything you've been telling me. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He got up, got dressed. After, mm -hmm. after he came, and was released by me. Mm -hmm. I think that's 
It's powerful. I think that speaks of the oldest son. I yeah. think that speaks of who you are <laughs> and have been in his life. Well. Because every time we were there, guess what we were talking about? <laughs> yeah, blowing the shofar, <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> Teaching at church. Um <laughs> but, but the the story is, and it's amazing how the Father works because from bitterness to blessing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I, I, I want, I'm not going to talk about all the details, but my sister's older sister's estranged from my parents, and she hasn't talked to them for a long time. A long time. And We're she, talking and years. And she could never understand, Rick. How can you do that in your life? How can, how you, can you forgive him? How can you be there with him all the time? How can you raise your children around them? Yes. She is bitter. And she is so bitter. But the testimony of that is, you guys, that as a witness, that that bitterness, I forgot. Manasseh, right? Mm -hmm. I Manasseh that in my life. Yep. And didn't allow it to cause bitterness. Mm -hmm. And the blessings. Mm -hmm. That came in his passing uh, just to keep it multiplying. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. In his passing, we're seeing so many things that have happened mm -hmm. and testimonies. And so, um, even. Well, and for our children. Yeah. yeah. For them to know that they he rejoicing. knows they are rejoicing. Well, and I, I, will, I will tell on my sister because I talked to her and asked her how she was doing. And I and the truth of it is, I was worried to express to her where I I knew my father was. You know, I was afraid that she might say, "I don't want to go there." You know, he's there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to do. I wanted to tell her this testimony of this vision that the father gave me, but I was like, "Oh Lord, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know how she'll react. I know how she's reacted before mm -hmm. to where when I've talked about mm -hmm. them." And so I was reluctant, and I says, well, and she, we, I called her, and she goes, how you doing? I says, I'm great. I, I'm doing really good with this. And I says, how are you doing? <laughs> and she says, you know, remarkably, Rick, I'm at, I'm at peace about this. And she says, I see him in my Messiah's lap, free of all these burdens and free of all the headaches and stuff <laughs> that he went through on this earth. Mm -hmm. And then he's free. Mm-hmm. He is free. And she said, you know what, Rick? I see him now as a dad that I always wanted. And so there was healing. These are testimonies that just continue to go on. Mm -hmm. But but in that bitterness, you guys, blessings. So I just, I would like to encourage everyone here today. Mm -hmm. If there's any bitterness. Turn it. Mm -hmm. Turn it to blessings. Mm -hmm. And fact, anyone that has anything on it like that. In fact, um, we just would like to have some ministry time. Um, if there's anybody in here, and you can stay where you want, where, where you are, or if you want to come forward, maybe there's bitterness that you're holding on to for a situation. You know, when I when I married Rick, I, f I found out who John Chadwick was, and you know, he was a he was a bitter, hard man. But he became very soft as years went by, and we watched him with our kids and grandkids, and and that's the sweetness that we can all choose is choose to not be bitter about things. So if you would like to come up. Um, maybe Josh, could you just maybe put one picture up of Grandpa? Um, that's a sweet um, aroma that's going up to the Father. Mm -hmm. My Father, because of the blessings, mm -hmm. became a sweet aroma. Yeah, and the because that's what the Father wants. He wants our fellowship. He wants us. That's what he wants. Mm -hmm. He wants us and our loved ones. Rick's in the upper right-hand corner of that. Oh, what? there he is. There's what? Rick in the bottom. I'm on the bottom there. <laughs> yeah. 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 
There's Joshua, his oldest grandson. That guy, he looks just like my youngest son, Nathaniel. I, you know, it's amazing, uncanny. <laughs> There's a great p story around the baseball team. I, you know, I, I don't want to take the time to tell it here, but it's just, it's a fascinating story. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, Korea. he went, he went to, to Korea. Korea. Mm -hmm. Korean War. Yeah. Uh, so, tribute to dad. <laughs> Football player. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Maybe we could have some uh, soft music, and and um, we just want, um, Lord, lead us. Yes. Lord, lead us in this life that we live. We can become bitter about circumstances. We can, in our human flesh, we often fight you because we're bitter. And what's the verse in Proverbs that you said? It's, uh, it's in Proverbs 20, 22. And it says, don't say, I'm going to get, get even for this wrong that's been done. But allow Yahweh mm -hmm. to do what he needs to do in the matter. Mm -hmm. Just yes. Yeah. Allow him. But allow him to press the oil out of us. Make the bitterness be sweet by the sweetness of God. We just thank you, Father that each and every one of us in our human state, in our fleshly state, we can't handle sometimes the circumstances of life that come. We have a really hard time. What is this going to mean? What is this going to do? But then we turn to you, and you make it sweet and blessed that we choose to do that because we are only flesh and bone when it all comes down to it at the end of our life we saw dad just as flesh and bone that was it his spirit and his soul was gone and where did he go and he went to be with his Lord. And that is ultimately, ultimately the blessing. None of this stuff on earth matters. None of it matters. We come to you, Father. We come to you. If anyone has a special prayer that they need,